Well, as Colorado leads the way toward decreasing fossil fuels, SunTrain wants to make renewable energy more accessible by way of a train carrying really big and heavy batteries. This is CBS Colorado segment where we go behind the story. Your reporter Andrew Hobner spoke to the creator of SunTrain, who says it's essential as Colorado's electric grid becomes more unbalanced. In Eden, there's a train, one that's different than any other that have come before it. Is we can actually move grid-ready electricity as a commodity over the existing freight rail network. Instead of a coal train, an oil train, or a natural gas train, this is going to be known as a sun train, which would transport energy harnessed by solar or wind power. But why do we need it? The grid is starting to become uh, difficult and load balancing. We need tra new transmission lines. We need a lot of new infrastructure in general. Christopher Smith, the chief technological well officer of SunTrain, told us today way. that new transmission lines could take up to 10 to 20 years to build and upwards of $3 trillion nationally. This is the first time you actually have a solution to the transmission problem that actually can be moved as grid congestion needs change. So here's how it happens. The train charges up in Puebla with the power from wind and solar that comes from the southeast end of the state. Then the train hits the rails and can power Metro Denver or other portions of Colorado as needed. Uh, we're going to need some of those solutions to make sure that prices go down for Colorado consumers and the reliability goes up. Governor Jared Polis co-signs on the project as Colorado surpasses California as the number one state in electric vehicle sales. That's very exciting, but it also means that we have to be even more thoughtful about a low cost, uh, resilient, renewable energy delivery system. And looks into its future of being a central hub across the country for renewable energy. All right, joining me right now is Andrew Hobner. Andrew, good to see you. Uh, what makes the Sun Train such an offbeat idea? Well, it's kind of strange, right, on yeah. its face, the conversation of we're basically going to travel batteries on the rails from one place to another. But we've yeah. got the big map here, and I'll show you exactly why it's necessary that we do this. So in the east side of the state here, right, there's all of the major solar and wind farms that we have that okay. create a lot of the renewable energy. But the issue has always been with those sources, how do you – are you able to get, you know, a southeastern Colorado wind farms energy and bring it all the way up to Denver where all of the real consumption is concentrated? Now, instead of doing something like a power transmission line that would go from here in the southeast all the way up to Denver, that could take millions, billions, even trillions, three trillion, as a matter of fact, wow, in 15 to 20 years to try and build that. Mm -hmm. Instead, they feel that these black lines, which represent the rail lines in the state, create an actual highway of sorts, that you can take the power from a wind farm down here, bring it to the Pueblo power station, like that major substation that they have, charge up those batteries and energy, and then just bring them up to Denver. Now, the interesting piece about that is it doesn't just mean Denver. Say you're having power issues with the grid somewhere over in Telluride, for instance. Okay. In this idea, you're able to power up those battery cars in this area of Pueblo and still truck them all the way out to the southwest corner of the state. And that's SunTrain's mm. idea and why it's so offbeat in that way, because yeah. what they allow people to do is they can actually transport power anywhere to Colorado. It's yeah. not just helping the Denver metro area. It's such an interesting idea. So, again, you, you kind of touched upon it already, but explain how renewables traveling across the state by diesel or f fossil fuel is a good thing because, you know, it kind of sounds <laughs> counterintuitive. And the second question to that is, what about the weather? Does that play a role into transporting the batteries too? Yeah, the weather, not so much, but I will admit, Brian, I had the same thought you did. I, I, my first thought when I got this story was, a diesel train carrying electricity sounds kind of dumb. Like, it doesn't really make a whole heck of a lot of sense when you think about the usage of it. But the belief among the guys at SunTrain is it works in two ways. Number one, it actually is more fuel efficient to be able to take that level of power, even if you are sacrificing a little bit of diesel usage on the front end. Mm. But the other goal, and this is interesting for the people that are particularly interested in passenger rail. Yeah. There is discussion long-term in this idea of electrifying 
the rails that would be taking these SunTrain battery cars from Pueblo to Denver, for instance. And if you're in anybody that wants high-speed electrified rail, and well, the main rail lines for Amtrak, you right. know, these lines right here, most of these lines aren't owned by Amtrak. They're owned by BNSF, for instance, oh, right? Yeah. And so the freight companies have right of way when it comes to being able to use their trains, and they have to be the ones to pay for the electrification of the rails, which is why everybody's dream of high-speed rail, we don't really get it all that often yeah. in the United States. So right. the idea is that it could work twofold. Hmm. You could electrify the trains that are bringing the energy, and then maybe down the road, it becomes a bit easier of a proposition to say, hey, let's put electrified passenger lines on these rails too, and it's a much easier proposition because the electrification has already been done. Man, such an interesting idea here. So does SunTrain eventually plan to eliminate transmission lines, or is this just a temporary solution? I mean, we talk about the trains carrying the batteries, mm -hmm. right? And we talked about how expensive it will be to create those transmission lines. So is this pretty much the long-term goal here? The belief is that it'll augment it, right? Okay. There are still uh, transmission lines that are being built across the state. Uh, XL Energy has it. It's called Power Pathways, and that's a major major long-term project that XL is trying to do to essentially modernize the transmission lines across the state. But what Governor Polis said in his press availability about this very uh, issue is the fact that the mobile component of this is what makes it very enticing for the future, because as we highlighted earlier, if there are grid problems in different areas of the state, you can truck mobile power, essentially. Think of these cars as generators, mm -hmm. and you're basically just taking a generator to a place without power and firing it up in the area. And that, I think, is something that they're interested in as a specialized solution where transmission lines might not be able to get to a place having that power issue. Yep. They can truck that in and make that a short-term fix while the transmission line gets built or fixed in the event of right. an issue. But in terms of the batteries, we know so batteries only have like a finite amount of power, mm -hmm. right? It only lasts for a certain lo uh, amount of time. How long do these batteries last? How often do you have to like recharge them and how different are they compared to maybe like a battery that's in like an electric vehicle, like a Tesla? I, I think that's probably the biggest question, right? Is is this a lithium battery? Yeah. Are we worried about a derailment and then we have like a nuclear level explosion? Well, of, those are concerns, of right? Absolutely yeah. it is. But the difference here is that these train cars are actually iron sulfate, which is not the same as lithium and are a little bit less of a risk from an explosive perspective. Now, the cars themselves have a bunch of fail safes. They still have to be tested. And that was the big thing is once these grants actually go through from the Federal Railroad Administration and other areas that they're trying trying to procure that money from, they're able to actually go in and test the cars, physically ram them into each other to see what the safety is going to look like mm. in the event of some type of impact. So they are a little bit different in that way. But I will say this, one car of fully charged energy here, that can power a thousand homes for a full day. And, okay. and it could be one home for 30 days. So these are gotcha. pretty significant power sources that can help, especially when we end up in those kind of uh, wave times, right? You know, for those of you that know solar and wind, you know, you have a lot of the power usage that occurs at night. And so this is a fix for that, where when the sun isn't out and you aren't able to procure solar power, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. these types of cars can transmit that energy into people's homes, and that is able to make solar and wind a little bit more round-the-clock solution, whereas right now, there is kind of like a finite curve of how much we're able to utilize it. Got you, got you. Last questions here. Number one, is this used in other states, and what's next for this? Well, planet? this would be a first. Um, yeah. The goal is that this is used in the state of Colorado first, and then they eventually build it out towards other states as a potential nationwide solution. That, I think, is the cool thing about this. Colorado, once again, aiming to be on on the forefront of renewable energy and trying to get away from fossil fuels, as has been outlined by previous presidential administrations, as well as the United Nations uh, Climate Accords, too. All right. Very interesting. Andrew Hobner, thank you so much. And to learn more about SunTrain, just go to our website, cbscolorado.com.